U.S. Representative Marsha Blackburn uh, joins us right now to discuss the Enhancing Safety at Military Installations Act. Uh, thank you for joining us. We really do appreciate that. Sure. I, I want to get your thoughts on this legislation and why you support it. Well, I tell you, I think it's one of those important pieces to push forward, and I commend Congressman Desjardins for taking this up on behalf of so many of his constituents and the country and making certain that we move back away from this executive order and this military rule that has been on the books since 93. So it is the right step. I support it because these men and women that are in uniform should be able to carry handguns. And this is what it would allow them to do, is to carry those handguns guns and be able to protect themselves. Give us some of the inside Congress stuff on this right now. Where is this bill now? Where does it go next? All of those things. Sure. What what has happened? The bill has been filed. It will go to committee and will get a referral. Of course, this will come through armed services. They will take an action at the subcommittee and the committee level. But I think even before that, Congressman Desjardins' bill and other bills that address this issue, I think what you will see is this issue will be resolved before we even have to put a bill on the floor. Because because people in the country are just so upset that the, the situation that occurred in Chattanooga, that these individuals could not carry a firearm. They are trained to carry a firearm. And these two orders from the military and the executive branch go back to 93 and 2001. So people are saying, look, we need to get these off the books and allow them to protect themselves. You did mention other legislation. I understand that there's a, a bill that already passed the House that was uh, in response to the Fort Hood shootings. How do these uh, two uh, pieces That's of legislation um, kind of match each other and complement each other as well? They are similar and they're related, and that is the reason that Chairman Thornberry is trying to address this issue through the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, which is being finalized right now. And it is wonderful that so many members have joined those of us from Tennessee and from Texas related to the Fort Hood shooting to say our men and women in uniform have the right, and they need to be given the right to arm themselves when they are in uniform. And last week, a DOD a spokesperson, uh, Jeff Davis, Captain Jeff Davis, uh, said, quote, we do not support arming all military personnel. Have you spoken to people in the Pentagon about what they would like to see happen and what they would support? You know, uh, Fort Campbell is in my district, and I have talked to so many of our veterans, our military families, and members of the military. And they feel like they, they're a pretty good judge, and their commanders are a pretty good judge of when they should be able to carry a firearm. And as I said, we're talking about handguns and not heavy artillery. We're talking about carrying a handgun. Handgun. And they feel as if this is a decision that should be left to them when the environment requires, when it is appropriate, that they be able to carry a handgun. And I, I think that right now, this is something that you're going to see people agree the flexibility should be there to allow them to carry and not to prohibit them from being able to carry. The flexibility is a great point. We've talked to one military expert who said that he would be comfortable arming more people, but maybe not everyone, because there's a lot of, of younger uh, military members who just joined uh, the military who may not be mature enough or understand the culture there uh, quite well enough yet, just yet. Would, how would some of these details uh, be, be addressed and worked out in your opinion? Well, what the legislation, both pieces would do, is give the allowance for the right to carry and would uh, remove the prohibitions. And then that allows the commanders who are in charge, not the Pentagon, but the commanders to be able to make these decisions. And if threat levels go up in our threat assessment, then they should be able to carry that firearm. If they are out and about, 
out and they are in uniform and this is during their work period when they are at their post, which by the way, being at your post is complying with and fulfilling your mission as you have been directed by your commander. So they need to have that ability and have those options. So what this would do is to insert that ability for the commanders to make these decisions when they deem that it is necessary to do so. Uh, can you tell me uh, this about the shootings in Chattanooga? If you watch the national media coverage uh, today, it, it, it appears that, that some of the national outlets ha have moved on from here. What's the climate in Washington about what happened here and how this will be addressed, both with that legislation and other things moving forward? Yeah, you know, one of the things that is so interesting, and I was uh, in my district this weekend, uh, I was over in the 4th Congressional District, I was down in Alabama, and here in Washington, I'm hearing pretty much the same thing from everyone. They are stunned and shocked that this occurred. It shows the aggressiveness of our enemy, and we do have an enemy, and it's time that the president define this enemy. It is radical extremist. Islamist and we need to be able to say this is our enemy and people realize these attacks can occur anywhere anytime they the uh, admission by the FBI director that these terrorist cells are scattered all across the country a concern by our Attorney General of multiple of these attacks and I will tell you I think we have to lose this term of lone wolf because these terrorists or jihadists, if you will, are connected via the online networks. They're connected in the virtual space. And this is how so much of their training and information is disseminated, information that is put out on blogs or tweets or Facebook posts. And we need to realize this, that in the cyberspace, we are conducting, seeing conducted, I guess would be the better term, uh, 21st century warfare is taking place. We have an enemy, and we need to make certain that we are vigilant. If people see something, they need to say something because we have to defeat this. We really do appreciate it. Thanks so much. Sure. Anytime. Thank you so much.